In this video, I'm going to look at another example of using proportional control. I'm going to solve it by hand and solve it using MATLAB. If you don't have access to MATLAB on your machine, you can install it via the OIT's website. Here's the instructions. You can run MATLAB through the university's VMware. To install the VMware software on your computer, open a browser and go to Seattle U's OIT site, then select Students, Computer Lab, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. To access the virtual lab, click here, yes, and follow the instructions. I'm running Windows XP on the machine I'm using for this demonstration, and I installed local mode. If you're running a 64-bit version of Windows 7, you probably want to use a 64-bit version. MATLAB is on the Start menu, Programs, Math Applications, MATLAB. Launching MATLAB will bring you to this screen here. The system we want to control is this simple heat exchanger. There is an air intake which goes into a mixing chamber and then the air exits here. The air is warmed by a simple resistive heater and the output temperature is measured with this thermocouple. The input for the system is the voltage applied to the resistive heater. The output is the temperature of the air. We want to maintain the air at a desired temperature. The specs for the system are that the damping ratio needs to be greater than 0.6 and the settling time needs to be less than three seconds. Throughout this video, I'm going to pause and give you something to work on. So when you get the signal, pause the video, work on the assignment I just gave you, and then resume the video when you're done. No cheating. First assignment, draw the area on the complex plane where the system poles need to be. So we're looking for an area where damping ratio is greater than 0.6, settling time is less than three seconds. We want a settling time of less than three seconds. Our definitions for settling time is settling time is equal to four over the pole location, put in three seconds, and that gives us that the pole location has to be smaller than minus 1.3. So it has to be to the left of minus 1.3 on the real axis. Damping ratio, I'm going to use this figure here. We know that given a complex pole, the distance to the origin is natural frequency, and the distance along the real axis is omega n times zeta. So a little bit of geometry here, and we can solve and find that theta is equal to 53 degrees. Now I can draw the area. So finding the intersection of those two areas, the green line corresponds to settling time. So anything to this side of the green line is okay and anything inside the 53 degrees is okay, and the result is that yellow region. So in my design, anything inside the yellow region satisfies the specifications. Next step is to create the model. The plant model looks like this. We have three components, the heating element, the heat exchanger, and the thermocouple, and I've given you the transfer functions for these. We're not concerned in this class about where those came from. In fact, they may not be very accurate models of the system since they're all just first order, but we're going to go with this. The resulting transfer function from the applied voltage to the heating element to the temperature output of the thermocouple is given by this. One thing to note, and we'll come back to this later, is that currently the input to the system is voltage. The output from the system is temperature. In the end, we want to be able to input a desired temperature and then have the output temperature be controlled to that value. The poles for the plant are at minus 2, minus 1 half, and minus 100. Note the minus 100 corresponds to the thermocouple. That's this system right here. We want to design a control system for this. So I'm going to put the plant and then use a unity feedback control system with proportional control. That system looks like this. The output for the system is the thermocouple. We measure the thermocouple and we compare it to desired temperature. That value is multiplied by a gain, and this value right here is the input to the plant, which is voltage. So now we have an input units, which are the same as the output units, and this is what you get when you use a unity feedback system. Again, here's the big picture. We have a plant. Input is voltage, output is temperature. We want to control the input voltage so that the output temperature is some desired value. The system without control has poles at minus two, minus one half, and minus 100. Those do not satisfy the specifications because the specs state that the poles all have to be faster than minus 1.3. This pole at minus one half is slower, and so we have to add a control system. We're doing that by using a simple unity feedback proportional 
directional control. The new input for the system is the desired temperature. The output from the controller is the input to the plant. And what we want to do is calculate the desired voltage using this simple control law. Your next step is to plot the root locus of this system as K varies from zero to infinity. Be back in a minute. The root locus for the closed loop system looks something like this. The open loop system has three poles, one at minus one half, one at minus two, and one at minus 100. There are no zeros in the system. Therefore, there must be three zeros at infinity, and we know from previous discussions where those zeros will occur. One will occur on the real axis at minus infinity, and two others will occur out here somewhere where the zeros are all separated by an equal angle, so it'd be 120 degrees. The root locus starts at the poles and goes to the zeros, and the root locus plot for this system would look like what I have drawn in green. The problem is that these two poles come together, split off, then go off to the zeros at infinity. And depending on where the breakaway point is, they may or may not pass into the desired region. So initially, I would say, even if we could control this system, we're just going to barely be able to make it into the desired specifications. So I'd probably go back to the manufacturer and say, hey, this is probably isn't a good idea because if the plant's a tiny bit off or the controller is a little bit out of spec, it's not going to meet the specifications. Regardless, we're going to see the best we could do. And the best we could do is to put the pole right here where that second order system has critical damping. The analysis I did here, I did fairly quickly. You should be able to do it that fast. If you can't, I'm going to go back and do it slowly so you can see all the steps. But you should be familiar enough with this process so that you can take a plant and quickly draw the root locus. Here we go in slow motion. Begin by drawing the system with the complete transfer function for the plant written out. Then find the closed loop system from temperature desired to temperature. Simplifying this transfer function, we end up with this and a little more algebra brings us to this point. We now want to plot the root locus. We are interested in how the denominator of the closed loop system changes as we vary a parameter. The root locus form that we use is D plus the parameter we vary times N. And you can see that the system is already in this form. That's because if we use unity feedback and the system has a numerator and a denominator, then unity feedback with a single gain will always give us a denominator of the closed loop system of the form D plus KN. That's how I was able to go so quickly the first time I did this. I just looked at the open loop plant and said the poles correspond to the roots of D, the zeros correspond to the roots of N, and I can put those on a root locus. Then I plotted the roots of this polynomial, that's the poles of the open loop system, and the roots of this polynomial n, which in this case is 1, which are the zeros of the open loop system. And then I did the root locus plot. Back to solving the system. I want to adjust the transient response of the system so that it satisfies the specification, that is, the closed loop poles must land somewhere inside this yellow region. Here is the closed loop characteristic equation. I can vary k. The root locus shows me that the the possible poles of the system are going to be somewhere on this pink line here. Well, this is a third order system. I can't just pick the poles that I want, create a polynomial, and match coefficients. I could do that if it was a second order system, because given two poles, I can write down the polynomial. I can't do that with the third order system because I don't know where on this segment of the root locus corresponds to this segment, and so I may not end up with a valid polynomial. A cheating solution is to say, this part of the system is so fast that I'm just going to pretend that it's not there and solve only the second order system. Well, let's see what happens if we solve only the second order system. So doing some quick analysis, I remove the fast system. I write the new corresponding approximate closed loop characteristic equation. The system has two poles, one at minus one half, one at minus two plot those, and now I have a system where there are no zeros, so I must have zeros at infinity here and here. Two poles, I've seen this pattern before, they come together, break off in the middle, form a straight line, and go straight up and down. The breakaway point's halfway in the middle, which is 1.25. Right away you can see I can't satisfy the specs with my approximate system. It's 
minus 1.3. I'm really close versus minus 1.25. Let's figure out what the value of K would be to put me at the best I could do, which would be right here, which is critical damping or zeta is equal to one. I want my close-up system to have poles at this location on the root locus because that's the best I can do. That means I'll have repeated poles at minus 1.25. So here is a system that has two poles, both at minus 1.25. It's easy to do this if you write the factors and then multiply them out. This is a corresponding closed loop characteristic equation that I would get if the two poles were at the green dot. Next, match coefficients. So I write down the actual closed loop characteristic equation match coefficients to the desired closed loop characteristic equation. I only have one parameter to vary here, so it means that all the other ones have to match, and you can see indeed the coefficients do match for the first higher order terms, and we would hope that would be so because I used the root locus to pick roots that I knew would exist. Now I go match, and I have k is equal to 0.56. Now the real question is, does this k from my approximate model work on the real system? So I'm going to go back to the full system and substitute k back in. Substituting k into the third order system, doing all the algebra, finding the values for s, we have s at minus 1.25 plus or minus 0 0.06, pretty much right on the real axis, and minus 100. This is what we expect. The settling time for this pole, the very fast pole, is approximately 4 over 100 is 40 milliseconds. The response to the rest of the system, this 1.25 is 4 over 1.25, is approximately 3 seconds. This is so much faster that if we had nothing, no system here, it would be instantaneous. And compared to 3 seconds, 40 milliseconds and instantaneous are almost the same, which is why it worked for us to remove the fast pole and solve it for the simpler system. This is a trick that you can use often to simplify systems, just make sure you go back and verify your solution still works. The final thing is to do a step response for the system to see how it's working. Now, we could do this in MATLAB, but I think we can get an approximate step response by hand. Going back and substituting in the numbers, the closed loop system looks like this. We input a desired temperature, we get out a temperature. Remember, there's a closed loop feedback in here that wraps around the actual plant of the system. Using the final value theorem, which is written here, G of S is the entire system. Remember, that is going to be composed of our closed loop system plus the input, which is 1 over S. So in the end, we have a system that looks like this. The S is cancel. S goes to 0. That term is removed. That term is removed. That term is removed. We end up with the steady state temperature being 0.35 times the input temperature. Now on to MATLAB. I've now switched over to MATLAB and created the system. It is a transfer function. The numerator is 1. Here are the coefficients of the third order polynomial for the denominator, corresponding transfer function. Now let's launch the SISO tool and do some analysis. Again, I'm going to go and turn off all of the things I'm not using. Graphical tuning, we're not looking at the Bode plots, compensator, editor, architecture, system data, change the plant G to the system I just described. We we'll use that system. Import should show up right there. Okay. So find the SISO design task window. And here's the root locus. And this is what we expect. You can't see what's going on here because it's auto scaling and we have this pole way out here at minus 100. So I'm going to zoom way in here just so I can see what's going on. There we go. Just as expected. Pole at minus one half, pole at two, they come together and break apart. And let's see how close our gain estimation was from the beginning. I'm going to move the poles so they're right together. Remember, you can move over and look here. The compensator editor, 0.55. When we just winged it by hand, we were getting 0.56. Not bad at all. I'm going to stick with this gain, and let's look at the step response. So I'm going to go back over to the analysis plots and turn on a step response. Remember, we want closed loop 
r to y. You can review the previous video if you can't find that. Here's a step response. We're expecting a settling time somewhere around three seconds. You can see we're a little bit slower than that, but that's expected because we weren't able to make the specifications. We're also expecting a damping ratio greater than 0 0.8. 0 0.7 gives us a little bump over the final value. We're under it. That's because we're critically damped with a damping ratio of about one. So this all makes sense. And steady state value, it's about one-third of the input for a step response. Again, this is what we saw with our hand analysis. The next thing we should check is to see how the control input looks. So I'm going to go back and turn on the control from R to U. And I'm going to turn this control off and let's see what the... So here's the step response. So there's a bump up. You can't see it. It instantaneously jumps up to 0.55 and then settles out. Again, it's this instantaneous bump that we were concerned about in the previous discussion. I'm going to put this all in Simulink just so we can get a little better handle on what's going on. In Simulink the system looks like this. Here's our third order plant. Unity feedback. Proportional gain of 0.55. Scope is on the output. I've also put a scope on the control input so we can monitor how much effort is required to move the plant. The other thing I've done is put a filter on the step input so we don't have to respond to an instantaneous change in input. I picked the filter poles to be about 10 times faster than the significant poles here. Those are about 1.25 negative, so these are about 10. Again, notice that the steady state gain for the filter is 1. Limit as S goes to 0 gives us 10 over 10, which is 1. And run the response. The output response is here just as we would expect. And the control response here, you can see we don't have an instantaneous response in this system. It comes up slowly. And this is where we end. It's the best we can do with a simple proportional feedback control. To get better response, we'll need to use a more sophisticated control scheme, such as derivative control or integral control.